It is time to make another YouTube video and uh, my microphone's here now because I last time I had difficulty uh, removing the incessant clicks from my clock and there was also a, like my brother playing guitar in the background that wasn't uh, the funnest experience I had in post-production. I'm kind of just gonna ramble because I wanted to make a video earlier this morning and I probably could have and I woke up this morning with three things on my mind. Number one, I wanted to enjoy the sunshine. Number two, I wanted to build something. And number three, I wanted to set stuff on fire. And that's actually kind of a good combination of those things because you can actually build something that uses sunshine to set stuff on fire. Basically, I'm gonna go from a kid setting ants on fire with a magnifying glass to a larger kid setting bigger stuff on fire with a bigger magnifying glass. I guess I'm just gonna ramble here because like I, I was enjoying the sunshine this morning when I was lying in bed and it was coming through my window. My room faces south by the way and I'm in the northern hemisphere which means that the sun shines directly through my window and it was a super nice day outside and it's also Oregon and I'm looking out the window right now and it's kind of gray skies. So I was gonna like go outside and just like do a vlog style video, walk through the park, you know, but um, I decided to make it in my room once it started raining and then it stopped raining immediately afterward. You know, that's how Oregon works. But anyway, here I am sitting in my bedroom talking to a camera, but hopefully in the video that you're watching right now, I'm gonna make a giant magnifying glass that focuses the sun into a really minuscule point to be able to vaporize stuff or not really vaporize. I probably shouldn't use the word vaporize, especially since uh, uh, one of my videos is about what vaporization isn't. But I guess I'll obliterate like cardboard styrofoam. I guess I could make glass out of sand if I wanted to or bricks. There's a lot of potential, but basically I'm gonna take the one kilowatt of energy per square meter that the sun provides us with and focus it down into maybe a square inch or two and then we're gonna set stuff on fire with it. Now you may be wondering where I'm gonna get a magnifying glass that focuses a meter squared down into something maybe this size actually. And that's where the Fresnel lens comes in. A traditional magnifying glass is a piece of glass that reflects at each point, it reflects the light from where it was coming to where it's gonna be going and it focuses it to where its focal length is. What a Fresnel lens does is it takes, it it allows these magnifying glasses to be much, much thinner. Imagine if I slice this in half and just use half of it. So one side is curved and one side is completely straight. And then I sliced it into a bunch of little circles and only kept the parts that were angled and then put them back together. Then I would have a Fresnel lens. There's actually a Fresnel lens on the external flash for my camera, I'm gonna grab that. Now focusing on the Fresnel lens itself, it just looks like a magnifying glass or just a piece of plastic in this case, cut into a bunch of little tiny circles. But these circles focus the light in a specific way to be able to make things look bigger or smaller. As you can see of the Fresnel lens, if the camera will focus, is that both sides are pretty much flat, except for the side with all the grooves in it, all the circles, that's what makes the Fresnel lens itself. I'm gonna add a little illustration about what a Fresnel lens does instead of what a normal magnifying lens does. Basically, it removes all the excess glass. And so instead of reflecting it through the entire piece of glass, it's just using the part that actually needs to be used. Now, in theory, a perfect Fresnel lens would be infinite. So there would be an infinite number of these circles. And that's not technically possible, but some of the larger ones have thousands or even millions of these little tiny cutouts. Although you do lose some optical quality because it's not perfect, these Fresnel lenses are pretty good at focusing light down to a point. In the case of its inventor, this guy was actually trying to make lighthouses more effective by being able to focus the beams of light in better ways, but without using huge amounts of glass. Because if you scaled something like this up so that it was four feet wide, that amount of glass would be so ridiculous. So instead he cut it into a bunch of chunks and made it so much thinner and so much easier to fabricate. Now you may be wondering like, wait, Patrick, where are you gonna get a lens like this? It seems like the glass and the technology would still make it pretty expensive. Well, yeah, a Fresnel lens about the size of a sheet of paper runs around $10. And a Fresnel lens about a meter squared runs around 
two or three hundred. Since I don't have a budget for this channel, I'm gonna have to figure out a more creative way to find a Fresnel lens. That way is in the hands of old rear projected TVs. Basically, these older TVs use a Fresnel lens to focus the light onto the screen. So there are some projectors in the back that project each color. And then they're all focused using the Fresnel lens because they wouldn't want to use something that has glass this thick in the middle of their TV. Not only would it weigh a ton, but it would also cost a ton. So they've figured out that Fresnel lenses can do the job just as effectively. For our purposes, we don't want anything else in the TV, so we're gonna donate it to the recycling center. All we want is the Fresnel lens, and I might actually have pulled some other of the guts in that area to use for something else. I think there's a mirror back there. Of course, this all hasn't happened yet, so. So we'll see how it goes. This is what I'm gonna leave you with for now. I guess I'll come back to you later. It'll just be within a few seconds um, because future me is gonna also talk to a camera, but we'll see how well uh, acquiring a Fresnel lens goes. In fact, it's a gamble whether this video even gets published. I do have some big plans for it though, and so it does, it is in my interests to make this really good and to make this happen as soon as possible. There should be a part two to this video. I can't really let you know what I'm gonna be doing in the future. Stay tuned and make sure you find out. Here's future me with the Fresnel lens, or at least trying to find one. This is one of the most powerful tools I have ever created. What this is, is a giant magnifying glass. Now usually I have it covered with a tarp because it's taking all of the energy right here from the sun and putting it into one spot, right on that piece of concrete right there. Now, me and my friend Cody, we are going to just basically burn some stuff and we hope you enjoy the video. You wanna set some wood on fire first? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, right now we have a penny. Let's see how well it melts. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do this even better. We're gonna melt something. We're gonna melt a penny completely. Oh my word, oh, wow. it's... That was fast. Don't, careful not to breathe that in.
scrape it off of there. Let's, let's let it swing back down, and we're going to cover it. That was incredible. Have you not done that yet? I have not just set it on there. <laughs> That's a penny, y'all. All right, on to the next thing. This is completely unscripted, by the way. Cody's got questions about the Fresnel lens, mm -hmm. and I hopefully have answers. Well, I had a question earlier of whether the actual like lens was hot or not, and something that could destroy a penny, something like that. Um, I I just asked the question of whether it would be hot or not. Yeah, so that that's a question that I've, I've heard before. The, the surprising answer is that no, the lens is not actually actually hot. The uh, the sun is beaming down on it, yes, and so the the lens could get hot, but the light on the lens is just straight from the sun. It's not focused in any way, um, which means that all the light is just coming, staying directly on it. Most of it is actually passing through it, so it's going to be not quite as hot as something else that's opaque that you would leave out in the sun. Uh, most of the heat gets directed through it and to that point where we, we put something, um, I'll call it the focal point from now on. Um, I also had another question of if you increase the lens size, what would, what would happen with that? That is what I wanted to do originally. I wanted to have, so that's like a 40 inch TV that I, that I turned into a lens. I wanted to get a 72 inch TV because what we're doing here is we're taking all the energy that's, that's hitting the lens and we're focusing it down to a small point. That means if, we, if the lens has more area, it's getting more energy and so that point will contain more energy um, and it will have more energy concentration and you'll be able to melt more stuff. And then I guess the last question is, is there any like practical ways of making energy to use from this method? Definitely. Now, I don't know if these things are economical to make. It's really a lot easier to make a concave mirror, but there are, there are power plants that are, it's a huge tank of water, and there are mirrors, or we could use a magnifying lens, that focus the sunlight onto the water tank which boils the water and then we can use that steam that and that pressure to create electricity in some way shape or form mm -hmm. um, and and that's another clean energy energy solution that's it yeah i think so thank you for having me patrick i had a lot of fun. all right good By the way, if you think I'm done burning stuff with the Fresnel lens, you're right. But I'm not done using it. In the video right here, or if it's not posted, it's not right here, but it will be here eventually, I am going to unleash the full potential of the Fresnel lens, but not exactly in the way that you think I'm going to. So stick around and watch the video. It might be a significant chunk of your day, but, well, 20 minutes isn't that much, and probably not even that. Watch it, or don't, save it for later. It's gonna be cool. I haven't recorded it yet. It should be here soon. Also watch my, my uh, shout out to Mark Grober, please. And share it with like 10 people, at least. <laughs>